Hello everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at introduction to amines. Now amines come in um, loads of different shapes and types and um, they are actually a, a very important part of uh, chemistry and you'll see them quite a lot and actually amines are uh, can form or subgroup of amines as amino acids which obviously are the building blocks of life so they are actually quite an important part. Um, now I'm going to go through uh, basically the types of amines and mainly we're going to go through things like boiling points, solubility, uh, nomenclature and how they react as well. So we're going to start with looking at the four types of amines. Now the most basic type is ammonia. Now ammonia is given the formula NH3. So um, it's not strictly classed as an amine. But um, you do have uh, other different types of amines and you can have different classes. So we call them primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary as well. So if you can see here, we've got a primary amine. The amine's got the NH2 group, so you can see it's like a derivative of ammonia, um, except we have an R group. Now, that R group could be um, any type of um, hydrocarbon that's attached to the other side of it. And we call this a primary amine because we've got one R group uh, that's attached to the um, nitrogen, um, that basically um, amine. So, and then again, we've got secondary, and see we've got two R groups bonded to the nitrogen, so that's a secondary amine. Uh, tertiary has got three R groups and quaternary um, is where actually the um, lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen um, is actually um, used or used up and we form a quaternary salt. Um, now these salts can be used, uh, very useful in things like fabric conditioners so uh, and shampoo as well. So um, when this salt is dissolved in water it forms what we call a cationic surfactant uh, and this molecule will then uh, plays an active role in fabric softeners and hair products. Okay, so we're then going to look at how we name these things. And obviously it's very important that you should be able to name these. Um, so we're gonna start with this one here. They're really easy to name. So this first one at the top here, I'll write it in blue. Um, this one is methyl and we've got an NH2 group at the end. So we call that one methyl amine. And I'll just squash that one up there. So you literally just put the word amine on the end. Really, really easy. Okay, um, this one, um, we've got a, a benzene ring and we've got an NH2. Um, this is one of the exceptions where we call it phenyl instead. So we call that phenyl amine. We just put amine on the end. Um, this is a slightly different one. This is a secondary amine, as we've seen over here. We've got two CH3 groups either side. So we're going to call that dimethyl. So that's the groups that we've got. And we just put amine on the end. And it's as simple as that. They're really easy to name. Um, this one's a little bit more complex. This is, a, again, it's a secondary amine, but we have uh, an ethyl and a methyl group. But in standard nomenclature form, um, you could do it in alphabetical order. So um, if you've got a methyl and ethyl, the ethyl comes before the methyl, because E comes before M. So all you do is you put in ethyl first, then methyl, uh, and then amine. So it's all one word, ethyl, methyl, amine. So it sounds a bit weird, but that's uh, that's how you should that's how you should name it. Okay, so that's your nomenclature. Really easy, just put amine on the end of it. Okay, in terms of solubility, um, amines are generally soluble, and the um, and the reason why is because they can hydrogen bond uh, with water. So you can see those are lone pair of electrons, uh, and the nitrogen from or the electrons from the nitrogen can hydrogen bond with the hydrogen on water. Uh, and vice versa. So the um, oxygen as well, um, the lone pairs on the oxygen can actually interact with the hydrogen on the um, ammonia. So on the amine side, now amines when they dissolve in water, they actually behave as a base. Um, and I'll just write a quick reaction here just to show you. I'll do it in blue. So if we do CH3 and H2, and we react that with water, which is H2O. Uh, now, according to bronsted lowry theory, um, bases are proton acceptors. So this ammonia, or this amine, sorry, can accept a, a, prot a proton from the water. So, and then you form this product, and I'll write the products down here. So this is gonna form CH3 and H3 plus, plus OH minus. And the fact that you've made OH minus obviously makes this basic. So it uses the water um, to produce OH minuses, which obviously makes your solution basic. Okay, so that's that one there. Um, we're then going to look at uh, boiling points, and for the similar reasons as solubility, 
Um, boiling point is very much dependent on the intermolecular forces that are between the molecules. Now, ammonia um, obviously can hydrogen bond um, because it's got a nitrogen, and you've got a hydrogen on the other ammonia. So again, we'll draw um, just an interaction. So we go from the lone pair of the nitrogen to the hydrogen on the other uh, amine. So these are actually um, uh, relatively high melting points, but if you had to make a comparison between amines and alcohols, for example, so if we had an alcohol with a similar MR of, as this amine, the alcohol will actually have a slightly higher uh, boiling point um, because the oxygen is a lot more electronegative than the nitrogen in amines. So um, because the oxygen is more electronegative, uh, you generally get a, a stronger hydrogen bond between uh, alcohol molecules and uh, then you do with uh, amine molecules. So just make sure you're aware of that comparison. But um, uh, compared to just standard alkenes, for example, without the amine group on, uh, they're a lot higher because of this ability to hydrogen bond, um, whereas alkenes can only um, interact band of arts. Okay, so uh, just look at the last one, which is uh, the way in which they can react. And amines are very versatile, which makes them quite useful um, for um, reactions in chemistry. So they can actually act as a base. Uh, and the reason why they can act as a base is because they are proton acceptors. So they can accept a proton. Acceptors. Okay. So uh, again, you'll see uh, there'll be other videos on amines uh, in the um, in the uh, list of videos that I've got, the playlist, uh, and you'll be able to see some reactions of how uh, bases react as well, or how amines react as bases. Um, they can also act as nucleophiles as well. Uh, and a nucleophile are uh, nucleus loving groups. Uh, and what they can do is they can donate their lone pair of electrons um, and interact that way. So they can uh, so I'll put on there. So they donate electrons to form bonds, uh, and that's effectively what a um, nucleophile will do. So they can behave in different ways. So they are incredibly versatile things. Um, now these things are um, amines. Uh, generally, don't smell very nice. They've got this kind of rotten. Um, they've got this fishy smell and this rotten kind of flesh smell, so they don't have the nicest of smells. Uh, and again, it derives from the amino acids in, in living things, and when living things decay, um, they can produce amines, which are not very nice smelling molecules. But um, just uh, that's just a very quick overview, just looking at the uh, properties, physical and chemical properties of amines, and a little bit of nomenclature as well. So keep revising. That's it. Bye.